Hello and welcome to the CEO Masterclass. I'm Peter Switzer. And today we're looking at a company called EM Vision, which is an innovative medical device company developing portable electromagnetic microwave imaging solutions. EM Vision's lead product is a point of care, non-invasive, non-ionizing, safe rapid brain scanner for stroke and brain injury diagnosis and monitoring. Now, the clinical prototype is in the development stage and its ability to shift the stroke care paradigm in a clinical setting in 2019 will be really important for the company. Dr. Ron Weinberger, thanks for joining us on the CEO Masterclass. Thanks very much for having me. So tell us, who is Dr. Ron Weinberger? Um, well, I guess uh, a family man. Mm -hmm. I love my kids and grandkids. Uh, but from a professional uh, perspective, I really started in research and started medical research uh, years ago doing, um, uh, I guess, uh, neurobiology and neuro-oncology research at the Children's Hospital at Westmead. Uh, from there, I went into the private sector and probably my most recent gig uh, prior to coming to EM Vision was at Nanasonics, mm. um, where I started in the product development and intellectual property development, uh, went on to uh, build up manufacturing operations. I was CEO for three years. Uh, I was an executive director for eight years in a listed environment uh, and uh, set up the infrastructure in North America with G Healthcare uh, to sell the product, mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing sales and uh, set up the distribution uh, in Europe for the product as well. Okay, you got form on the board when it comes to this sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I've been able to sort of uh, do it from the ground up and uh, graze my knees and go on and do yeah. what I can. Real skin in the game. Yeah. Uh, EM Vision. Explain what EM Vision does to my viewers. Okay, so EM Vision uh, has taken intellectual property out of the University of Queensland, uh, and that intellectual property is focused on microwave imaging. So if we think about microwaves, they're the same sorts of information or communications that you have in your phone, the same sort of uh, uh, waves. What these actually do is uh, analyze the brain tissue and any other abnormal tissue within the body. The purpose of all of this is to develop unique diagnostic products that are actually transformational for which there are no alternatives today. Mm. So if we look at what's available now, mm. what does this microwave technology offer that's so much better? Sure, so um, first of all, it's very hard to look inside the brain mm. because you have to deal with the skull. So getting signals in order to be able to, to investigate what's mm. happening in there uh, is not that easy, uh, certainly in a point of care situation. So uh, today, uh, probably CT and MRI uh, are the standard of care for in investigating uh, what goes on inside the brain. Uh, those are very expensive, uh, they're stationary, there's usually a backlog of patients uh, trying to get into that. Uh, and I guess probably the best way to, to think about what's really being transformational in diagnostics and imaging is being ultrasound. And ultrasound has been able to take imaging and diagnostics straight to the patient, mm. but it can't do the brain. So what we're bringing to the patient is just the same as ultrasound, but diagnostics at the point of care by the bedside or possibly in an ambulance in order to be able to assist clinical diagnosis and management. Okay. Is it, uh Anyone else in the world trying to do this at the moment? Yeah, look, the, this has been a field of research and investigation for a while. Uh, there are uh, a couple companies out there. Um, I think what really distinguishes what it is that we're doing is we're able to use AI learning uh, and algorithms that do three-dimensional reconstructions mm -hmm. uh, to be able to provide the best information for clinicians and to be able to distinguish between the different types of strokes. Mm. Do, do you feel as though you're head of the pack at this point? Huh? Look, uh, I think we are. Um, and part of that is because of the over 10 years of work that's been done at the University of Queensland in this imaging technology, mm. which has certainly put it at the forefront of what's out there internationally. It's given us an excellent springboard, you know, from which to, to be able to develop the product. Okay, we know the timelines um, are very different from what's hoped and what actually happens. Sure. But, but give us your best guess on what the timeline is from where you are now to the stage where this is, is being accepted by medical practitioners. It seems to me you're implying that if you get to where you want to be, it's going to be as um, accessible as ultrasound is nowadays. Everyone seems to have ultrasound. Sure. Um, look, uh, you know, as you know, and you've just alluded to, it does take a little while to get all of mm. this uh, done. Um, and look, we 
you know, obviously we do have some ambitious goals. Uh, we're looking to get into our first clinical trial at Princess Alexandra Hospital uh, in the second half of this year. Yeah. Uh, and then our pivotal clinical trial will happen in the second half of 2020. We're hoping uh, by that stage to be able to start to put regulatory approvals through. So we're looking at 2021 is where we anticipate we'll be able to market the product, um, mm. certainly in, in Europe and in other parts of the world. Are there any n uh, worrying negatives that could um, frustrate the great potential of this? Because the great potential is you know, the fact yeah. that you can show brain. Is, is there, are there you know, perceptible negatives or is this a matter of making the technology work? Well, I think it's making the technology work. And the question isn't if it's going to work, but exactly in what context it's going to work and what is the depth of information that will be provided. So the more of that that we can actually get, the better. Mm. Uh, I think that in terms of uptake of the, of the product, uh, it really will be a new product and a new technology. So bringing doctors and clinicians on board is going to be uh, not necessarily a simple process, but one which I think once you get the groundswell, and, and ResMed did a fantastic job of doing that, and that will drive the market adoption. Okay. A, a really good sign is when a big company wants to play ball with a little company. Yeah. And so you've recently got that large tech company called Keysight Technologies, uh, and they formed a partnership sure. with you. So what's that about? Okay, so uh, where our expertise in technology really lies is in the scanner that goes on the head. That and the information and the algorithms that are there to sort of analyze the data. Um, another component of the product is basically sort of a supercomputer called a VNA, Vector Network Analyzer. And what this does is actually send information and receive information to analyze it. And then that ends up on the laptop for the doctor to have a look at mm -hmm. where, where the problem is in the brain. So we don't want to do what someone can el else can do better. We want to focus on, on the elements and the aspects that uh, we believe our expertise lies. So uh, we've decided to partner with a large company called Keysight. It's a large $16 billion, $16 billion New York Stock Exchange listed company uh, that works in all areas of microwave assessment and testing and evaluation. They're uh, in aeronautical, automotive, 5G is their, is their latest big thing. Mm. And uh, they're really looking to expand their market opportunities and, and enter new market channels. So they'll be strong where you're weak. Absolutely. And I think uh, because they've made a strategic investment into the healthcare sector, which is new for them, mm. they're looking for ideal partners with whom to work. Mm. Uh, they've targeted us as a partner that provides best in class uh, research technology and uh, I think commercial expertise. Okay, so now I understand, I'm reading here that you've got a $3.5 million Commonwealth grant with GE Healthcare. Sure. And, and what other non-dilutive funding opportunities are there? I also hear you're part of the Australian Stroke Alliance. So right. talk us through that. Yeah, so um, I think one of the things that's really happened in more recent times is the government has actually seen a focus and an importance of pursuing stroke because it is such a large health economic burden. Mm. Uh, and uh, so uh, the Stroke Alliance is part of an initiative to try and bring different parties together, uh, whether it's uh, paramedics, uh, it's um, Royal Flying Doctor Service, through to um, a number of other commercial partners. We're part of that. Uh, and that funding uh, goes up to the uh, Medical Research Fund, uh, which is a federal government initiative. Uh, and we're looking to, we've got a compet competitive grant in there mm -hmm. for funding in order to be able to pursue some of the work that we're doing and to establish those clinical alliances. Okay, so that sounds a, 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 a nice um, leg up. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's uh, fantastic. We're working with the world experts in, in stroke care and management mm -hmm. uh, and really getting an insight into the challenges and problems that clinicians have at all spectrums. Okay, so how big is this market and what are the, the key trends in imaging? Sure. So, look, um, you know, it's very hard to actually um, identify the market. We're, in, we're, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars in terms of opportunity. Um, but, you know, all of these things, small pieces at a time. Mm. Uh, the market, uh, I guess, is, is very large because, as I said, there is this move away, sort of the Star Trek 
not you know approach to diagnosing and 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 clinically treating patients We're right going up where front. no one's ever been before absolutely you yeah. took the words out of my mouth yeah. um and uh i think that that type of uh approach is really going to be the, the way that we're going so it's the same thing as wearables will be wearing technology that assesses our health mm. the closer and smaller we can get better we can get to the patient uh, the more value will be applied and of course you know, if you're with first responders uh, and they're trying to identify what is the problem with that partic particular patient, mm. uh, it's going to be, you know, a totally new way of doing things. Ron, is there any other better question that I should have asked you that will help people <laughs> understand the company? Well, I think uh, what's really useful, uh, I think, uh, for, for your viewers mm. is to understand that we own all the intellectual property and the rights to use this microwave imaging for all medical applications. Mm. So whereas we're really focusing on stroke, and I learned a long time ago, do one thing and do it really well, and then people will be able to provide you with money uh, for as long as you like. Uh, we're very keen to pursue other opportunities, and we do know that companies in this space uh, can invest too much upfront for one product without having to look for pipelines. So um, we do have an initiative to look at fatty liver disease, which one in four of us uh, have, and those of us over 50, that's only one of us, that's me. Uh, in this in this room here, um, uh, about fifty percent of those uh, also of us actually have this, which mm. can lead to very serious liver disease. So we're pursuing that as an opportunity, uh, and we're very heavily invested with clinicians uh, looking for clinical unmet needs where we can apply this. And that's Dr. Ron Weinberger, who's the CEO of EM Vision. Thanks for joining us on the CEO Masterclass.